Um, I'm sure many of you may know that the Dover voters, in one sense or another, uh, took care of this themselves. Uh, democracy works. Um, and before the court case was decided, before the court case was decided, they voted the entire Board of Education. Uh, all eight members up for re-election were voted out of office. Um, and uh, I, I think that's a marvelous testament to the fact that uh, people can understand the issues. And when they understand the issues, they go out and they make intelligent choices. And I should also point out that this was actually, in many respects, was difficult for voters in Dover to do. This is a town that typically votes 75 percent Republican. The school board was all Republican. Almost all of the insurgent candidates were registered Republicans. To be sure they got in the ballot in November, they had to switch parties to the Democratic side so they could file as a single slate. And then they had to convince people, yes, we know that you're Republican. We are Republican. We are conservatives, too. But we want you to go to the Democratic side and pull the lever for us. And lo and behold, they did. So it was remarkable stuff. Um, while this was going on, the legal system worked as well. Um, and at the end of the trial, uh, the federal judge who uh, rendered this verdict, uh, John Jones, uh, basically ruled that intelligent design was unconstitutional. His verdict was sweeping. And that is, he not only uh, ruled on the narrow issue of whether this was appropriate, he ruled on the broader issue of whether intelligent design was actually a legitimate scientific idea that belonged in the classroom at all. Um, these are some pictures that were taken from the ruling. These are some of the winning plaintiffs. The case has the name Kitz Miller et al., based on Tammy Kitz Miller here, who was the first lead plaintiff. And I would invite any of you who are interested in this decision to read it. It's very readable. In fact, parts of it, as I will show you, are very funny. Um, and if you just do Kitz, K-I-T-Z Miller, on Google, you will find it right away on the web, and it's floating around. This is Judge Jones. One of the things I got a kick out of was the insistence uh, by some people who didn't like the verdict the Judge Jones was another one of those darn liberal activist judges. Um, this is a cartoon talking about this exact point. Um, I'll blow this up a little bit. Um, and this is the sort of thing we have to appoint more church-going Republican judges. And this person who presumably knows Judge Jones says, uh, by the way, he is a Bush-appointed church-going Republican judge. Uh, judge, uh, judge Jones is a political protege of former Governor Tom Ridge of the state of Pennsylvania. And Judge Jones was recommended for the federal bench by Senator Rick Santorum in Pennsylvania. So any notion, any notion that Judge Jones is a liberal activist judge is belied by who his sponsors were and also by his judicial record. He simply, I am convinced, someone who is bright, who is intelligent, and who understands the meaning of the Constitution. And just like a good umpire who calls him like he sees him. Um, and that's exactly what happened in this case. Um, this is a nationwide issue. I've talked about trials in Georgia and Pennsylvania. I'm sure all of you are familiar that this has been an issue in the state of Ohio. It is also a continuing issue, as we shall see, in the state of Kansas. And I just very quickly colored in a few more states in which there are either boards of education that are trying to de-emphasize evolution or bills filed in state legislature to give equal time to intelligent design theory, criticisms of evolution, or even creation science. Many of my friends up in the Northeast tend to say, oh, this is just a problem in flyover country. Who cares about this? I actually spoke at Harvard a couple of months ago. You aren't going to believe this. And somebody put their hand up and said, who cares what they teach kids in Alabama and Mississippi? Um, and I thought, wow, um, you know, realize how that sounds. Um, and then I realized that I was at Harvard. And I pointed out that E.O. Wilson, the great evolutionary biologist at Harvard, grew up in Alabama. And the point is, does it matter what we teach kids in Alabama and Mississippi? For all we know, the next Stephen Jay Gould or E.O. Wilson is down there in Alabama and Mississippi, and you damn straight it matters what we teach people in every classroom in this country. Let's go to Kansas. Advocates of so-called intelligent design scored, no question about it, a major victory in Kansas this year by attacking what they called naturalism in state standards. This may happen in Ohio, too, so I would urge you to be on guard about this. Now, what do I mean by naturalism? The Board of Education in Kansas, which is now governed by a six to four anti-evolution majority, held a series of hearings to which many scientists, including myself, were invited and to which we did not go. And the reason for that was because the three board members who presided over the hearings had already announced in advance that they were against evolution. And the hearings were, in our opinion, simply a political sham. Well, what happened afterwards 
is the board decided, first of all, that they would de-emphasize evolution. Secondly, that they would introduce so-called criticisms of evolution of the sort that you've seen in Ohio. But if you really want to know what is at risk from the anti-evolution movement, look at Kansas. And the reason for that is when the anti-evolution movement got control of the State Board of Education, what did they do? They rewrote the definition of science itself, not just biology, not just evolution, science. All of a sudden, they're getting the chemists upset. They're getting the physicists upset. They're even getting the geologists, who paid no attention to anybody, upset <laughs> on this issue. Now, what do I mean by rewriting the definition of science? This was the definition of science in the Candace School Standards. Science is the human activity of seeking natural explanations for what we observe in the world around us. It seems to me like a straightforward, common sense, easy to understand definition of science. Did the new board like that? Uh-uh. They deleted that. And they decided, we want to put this up. Science is a method of systematic uh, continuing investigation, uses all this good stuff, to lead to more adequate explanations of natural phenomena. That doesn't sound too bad. But wait a minute, what do they mean by more adequate as opposed to natural explanations? Remember the standards once said, we seek natural explanations from science, and they now say we want more adequate explanations. Well, the board majority explained this to everybody, and they said, here's, the, here's what we want to do. We want to get rid of the concept of methodological naturalism that is used in physics and chemistry. Um, and basically, we think that what naturalism does is it limits inquiry and permissible explanations and promotes the philosophy of naturalism. In short, we want to open science up to non-naturalistic explanations. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. What is a non-naturalistic explanation? I can't think of anything except the supernatural explanation. Supernatural explanations may be correct. Remember, I live in New England. A lot of people who looked at the baseball playoffs in 2004 could, could see the hand of God in the success of the Red Sox. And you know what? I, I think that might be true. I think God might have had his fill of George Steinbrenner that year, um, and that was it. But that explanation, even if correct, is not science because it's not testable. And that's the point that is made. And the notion of promoting non-naturalistic explanations is exactly what's happened in Kansas. Now, you might say, but, you know, come on, shouldn't you teach both sides? Well, sure you should. But you have to realize that with many scientific ideas, when you talk about teaching both sides, what are we talking about when we talk about both sides of chemistry, neurobiology, physics, or astronomy? When you look at the other side, you might be disturbed as to what the other side is. It could be alchemy, phrenology, outright magic, or astrology. Now, this is... I think most of you will agree, even if you don't like what I'm saying right now, most of you will agree, that's a pretty funny cartoon. But it's, you know, it's an editorial, I mean, come on. This is an editorial cartoonist. He's taking license with the facts. Nobody really wants these things in the science classroom. And you know what? Until the Dover trial, I would have thought that too. But a funny thing happened at the Dover trial. Pay attention to this one down here. Um, and that is... Where would intelligent design take the science classrooms? Michael Behe was placed on the stand under oath in the Dover trial. Michael is a professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University. He's probably the country's leading advocate of what he calls the biochemical challenge to evolution. He is very much in favor of intelligent design. He's a member of the Discovery Institute. He's been here in Ohio. On cross-examination, Dr. Behe admitted that his definition of theory was so broad it would also include astrology. Um, and here's another thing from the same article. Um, he also pointed out, the lawyer pointed out, that astrology would come under this definition. B, he agreed with that, and the exchange prompted laughter from the court. 